What's going on guys? I'm Jake the Long Kid. Welcome back to another weekend in the lawn. For those of you guys who were around last week, you guys remember I did a video all about sprayer calibration showing you guys how to calibrate your hand can or pump sprayers. Well in today's video we're going to be exploring some of those same principles but I'm going to be showing you guys how to do it with a hose end sprayer. Now to be honest with you guys before I get into the video here I actually do prefer the hose end sprayer over the backpack sprayer because I do get a little bit more control with it and it is more comfortable to operate. In order to understand a little more about what I mean about that make sure you watch all the way to the end of the video to get the full message so with all that being said let's get into the video brah this is how you know spring is near check this out look when you get down in your dormant lawn you notice these little blades of green starting to show spring is near. So I already know the biggest question I'm going to get is when do I start mowing the lawn? I know we've been maintaining it. I know we've been keeping all the debris and whatnot off of it, but a lot of you guys are curious right now. You're getting excited. You're wondering when you can actually mow the lawn. Well, to be honest with you, now is not the optimum time. Now, the reason I say that is because the lawn is still dormant. The lawn is still sleeping. And as I've talked about before, mowing stimulates growth. And that's not something we want to do right now, right? We want to allow the lawn to slowly wake up. And once soil temperatures get into the optimum, range for mowing which is going to be 65 degrees then that is a great time to get out and start mowing the lawn but in the meantime make sure you're getting out keeping the debris off making sure the lawn is standing up straight as much as possible because as I've talked about before airflow is key Let's talk all about sprayer calibration, how to calibrate a hose end sprayer. Before we get into the video here, I want to go over the sprayer I'm using and basically how it's made up and how it works. So this here is the ortho dial and spray and the way it works as well as pretty much any hose end sprayer you're going to use is on one end you have your input end which is where your hose goes. This is where the water will come into the system and pump through and then in the middle you have a tank here with a tube that extends from the sprayer down into the tank and what this uh, tube does is it'll suck the product out of here and it'll pre-dilute it into the system and then that pre-diluted product with the water will then come out of the business end here out and on to your target which in cases of this video is going to be the lawn. Now to be more specific with this business end we have three different streams to play with. Number one we have our shower stream, number two we have our jet stream, and number three we have our flat stream. Now for purposes of this video which is to cover the most amount of area in the least amount of time I am going to be using the shower stream and I recommend that a lot of you do too. It's really personal preference you can use whichever one you want but I'm just saying if you're looking to really cover a lot of area in very little time then the shower setting is the best stream setting to use. Now the last thing I want to go over here is the dilution dial. Every single hose end sprayer you buy is going to have one of these so what the dilution dial does is it dictates how many ounces of product come out per gallon of water. Now in order to get an accurate measure on this we're going to have to do what it's called a bucket test. A bucket test will help us understand how long it takes our sprayer to output put one gallon of water thus it'll give us a better idea of how things will flow. In conclusion after I bucket tested I didn't film it in this case I didn't really film a bucket test for this one but in conclusion to bucket testing with this sprayer I came to learn that it takes 30 seconds for this sprayer to output one gallon of water and as we've talked about before one gallon of water covers 1,000 square feet of lawn area. Yeah. 
let's go ahead and get into the meat and the potatoes of this video and that is going to be the actual sprayer calibration. Now the first thing we have to do is we have to remember our constants. If you want to learn a little bit more about these constants and depth I will leave a link in the description below as well as a link in the eye in the top right corner to last week's video where I showed you guys how to calibrate a pump sprayer. I'd like you guys to go back and watch that video as there are going to be some similarities and overlaps between that video and this one. So go back and watch it to get a better idea. Brief identification of what these are. H being your height, W being your width, S being your speed, and P being your pressure. Height affects your width, right? How high you hold your sprayer is going to affect the width and the distance of your spray pattern. Make sure that that stays consistent throughout the entire application. And the third one here, speed. Speed is something you want to make sure you commit to. Once you start walking at a certain speed, you want to make sure that you stay at that certain speed the entire application to ensure that the most consistent application is possible. The last thing you want to do is walk fast and slow, fast and slow in a jerky pattern and get more product in some areas than others and then have an inconsistent application. So when it comes to speed, make sure you commit to it. And then lastly, we have pressure. Now, pressure isn't really something we have to worry about in this case because we don't have any pressure regulators or anything like that. It's just the raw, bare-to-the-bone pressure that is coming out of my house. So in this case, this sprayer, no matter what, is always outputting two gallons per minute. So pressure is not something we have to worry about, not a constant we have to worry about adjusting. Now that we've got all that together, let's talk about the actual application here. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to take a thousand square foot area and we're going to walk that area at our natural walking speed and see how long it takes us to do it. But before we do that, I want to make sure that my walk and wave is in line. Now what do I mean by walk and wave? Basically what I mean by walk and wave is because we are using a hose end sprayer, I'm not expecting you guys to keep the spray nozzle stable the whole time. In fact, while you walk the lawn, one thing I recommend you do to ensure that you cover more area in less time is that while you're walking make sure that you're waving the sprayer back and forth and that you keep that speed consistent throughout because while you're doing that you're allowing yourself to cover more ground in less time like I've been talking about throughout this video so make sure that you walk and wave when you're using a hose end sprayer as you have the ability to do so. To dive a little bit more into detail with walk and wave you want to make sure that your walk and wave line up. Now what I mean by that is that if you're a fast walker like me it's very important that you're waving the wand fast enough to match that walking speed Otherwise, if you're walking faster than you're waving the sprayer, you're more likely to have a zigzag pattern in your application, and that can result in making your application inconsistent. So when you're a fast walker, it's really important to make sure that the speed that you're waving your wand back and forth matches up with your walking speed so that you can get the most consistent application possible, and you don't have to worry about applying more in some areas than others. Capiche? Now that we got our walk and wave in line, now it's time to see how long it takes us to cover a thousand square feet feet at our natural walking speed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk and wave across a thousand square foot area, again covering as much area as I can in, the, in a timely manner as possible. So what I'm going to do is walk and wave at my natural pace across a thousand square foot area. I'm going to time the walk and then from there that'll affect my adjustment that I'm going to make for my dilution setting so that I can keep things as comfortable as possible. Okay, so as you've seen in the video, I didn't really have a perfect thousand square foot area to play with, so I decided to use my 500 square foot side lawn instead. Now, no big deal, we're just going to have to do a little bit of multiplication here to make sure that we get up to a thousand square feet. So, in conclusion, as you saw there in the video, it took me 12 seconds to cover 500 square feet. Now, to make my math easier, we're going to go ahead and round that up to 15 seconds, and you'll see why that'll make everything easier in a second. So, from there, what I want to do is I want to is I want to get this up to a thousand square feet. And the way I'm going to do that is by multiplication. So 500 times 2, that'll give me 1,000 square feet. And then 15 times 2, ignore the 12 here, that'll give us 30 seconds to cover 1,000 square feet. And as I mentioned earlier, our ortho dial and spray outputs one gallon in 30 seconds. One gallon covers a thousand square feet. So as you see, my walking speed, my consistency, all of that is good. It takes me 30 seconds to cover a thousand square feet dead on 
accurate. The big question I'm going to get in the end here is going to be, okay Jake, so I, I got my walking speed set, right? I know how long it takes my sprayer to output one gallon of water, but now where do I set the dial? I don't have a specific answer for you, but I can tell you one thing. Where you decide to set the dial varies based on your walking speed. Now, me for instance, I'm a fast walker by nature, so I'm going to use the highest setting possible, which is 8 ounces per thousand square feet. To give you a better idea of what I'm talking about, let me run you through a scenario here. Let's say I want to apply Green County Next Humic 12, which is something I talk a lot about on this channel, and I want to apply that at 8 ounces per thousand. Back to our math here, orthodialent spray outputs 1 gallon in 30 seconds, and 1 gallon covers a thousand square feet. If I set it to 8 ounces, that'll take 30 seconds to output that one gallon of water to cover a thousand square feet. Just because I adjust my sprayer to the highest setting, doesn't mean you have to, right? The only reason I do that is because that's what's comfortable for me. I'm a fast walker by nature, and as Gary Vaynerchuk says, it is best to triple down your strength. In this case, that is fast walking, so I'm going to stick to that. Now, if you guys want to walk a little slower, you have the ability to do so. so let me just run you through a couple brief scenarios here. If you wanted to set it at four ounces per gallon of water, then that means you can cover a thousand square feet in one minute. Uh, two ounces that allow you to cover a thousand square feet in two minutes and one ounce four minutes for one thousand square feet But what I want you guys to realize is that it's not about what I want you to do It's more about what you want to do and what you're comfortable with so in conclusion here when it comes to calibrating a hose end sprayer It's not really that hard It's just when you do it make sure you do it in a way that you cover as much area as you can in a minimal amount of time And that you're getting a consistent application and, and really it doesn't matter what you do as long as you get one gallon to cover a thousand square feet as long as you can do that you should be fine. Back to what I said in the beginning of this video, the reason I like hose end sprayers better for blanket applications is the sprayer allows you to calibrate it to you so that you can walk at the speed that's most comfortable for you and you don't have to make any of those minor adjustments. Now it is a little more complicated to figure out but I'm telling you once you do the math for yourself it becomes easier and easier time after time. So there you go guys there's everything you need to know about how to calibrate a hose end sprayer. I hope you guys enjoyed this and if you did please be sure to subscribe to the channel and I'm going to show you guys how to get the greenest and thickest lawn on the block. With that, I'm Jake the Lawn Kid. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. If I don't see you guys next time, you're going to be dominated, bro. See you later.